Morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to do a JSA Call 101 video from the perspective of a newbie. I've been using JSA Call now for about two months. Half of that time has been in the field and the other half of the time has been in the shack. So I don't have all the answers. I'm gonna get some things wrong, but I am being effective with my group in my region using it. And I wanna share with you specifically how I configure JSA Call. We're not gonna be able to touch on everything we're gonna use the radios and equipment that I have, so you're gonna to have to make some adjustments. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Well guys, I really hate making these screen recordings. It is not fun, it's not sexy, but I see enough value in JSA Call, especially with my limited testing that I've done with my group that I wanna share with you why I think JSA Call is important and why you should even consider doing all the things we're gonna talk about today to even be able to send your first message. Now. JSA call is a, at the end of the day, a mechanism whereby you can send very small messages over the airwaves using your radio and a computer without any infrastructure involved. So it's perfect for emergency communication and preparedness. There's no internet or cell phone required. The other reason I like it is because it's a mode that will typically work when other modes using radio will fail, like voice communication, heck, even some of the other digital data modes. So it's a weak signal mode, which means that it will actually pick up very faint signals that are way down in the noise floor. And depending on how we configure and use JSA call, we can go very far into the noise floor. So we have a network of operators here in the Southwest. We are training every single day, and some of us don't have the best signals or the best uh, amount of output power. In a lot of cases, I run only three and a half to five watts, and I'm making contacts pretty much throughout the entire day. So for those reasons, if you guys are not hooked, uh, I don't know why you wouldn't be hooked. Maybe it's all this nerd stuff, but uh, hopefully I'll try to make that a whole lot easier for you guys so you can get started. Okay, so what do you need to get started? So let's talk about licensing regardless of what your feelings are on the subject. So if you're in the US, you do need your FTC amateur radio license. And I really recommend that you get your general class license. That's the second license tier. And that's because all of the activity is on the HF bands. Technically, JS8 call will work with uh, your tech license, but there's very little activity, at least in my area, using JS8 call on two meters and 440. Number two, you're gonna need a HF radio, a computer, and a way to interface those two. This is a very complicated subject. There's lots of uh, discussion groups online and videos that can help you do that. For today, I'm gonna to be using my Yaesu FT897D with the DigiRig mobile as the modem, and then I'm gonna be running Linux, and that's basically it. In terms of the software, JSA Call can be downloaded from jsacall.com under the download section, and there are three major platforms that are supported, Windows, Linux, and Mac. I have tested two of those three. I haven't used Windows since Windows 95, so can't help you there, but the configuration for the most part is pretty similar. Well, folks, I had to turn off the camera light or the studio light mostly because it puts out too much RFI and it's killing what I'm trying to do here. All right, so let's jump into the settings and I'm only gonna touch on the settings that I actually configure and skip everything else. So when you first start it up, you want to enter in your call sign. So I'm gonna put in my call sign and then your grid location. I'm in Delta Mic 33 X-Ray Victor. And I think you can do up to 10 characters. I'll put a uh, link to the calculator online if you're not familiar with that system. And then you can put a call sign group. And this is a way to send messages, not just to a single person, but to a whole bunch of people that are interested. So if everybody in your group uh, settles on a convention of at and then some group name, you can actually use that to distribute messages across your group. And we're using TTP uh, in our area across the US and in specifically the Southwest for the most part. In terms of station messages, there are a few. Uh, I do like to fill out the station info so that when people query my station, they can ask, um, you know, what are you running? So I have the FT897D and then I'm running the Chameleon Cha left lightweight and fed sloper and that's pretty much it that's all i put in uh, in terms of radio this is the important one and the one that sadly i'm not going to be a whole lot of help in because there's a lot of different radios and a lot of way to interface them i actually use uh, for my uh, 
interface, I use something called Hamlib and specifically the rig control daemon. It's a little network application that is configured by radio ID to talk to certain radios. And I use that so that I can connect a lot of different radios and not reconfigure my software. So it's beyond the scope of what we're doing here. So if you're not going to use that, uh, good luck to you. Uh, try to find a, a member from your ham club or go online. So I'm gonna go to hamlibnet rig control. And what we do need to do is make sure that we specify the network server. And by default, it's running on our local machine. So we're gonna put down localhost, colon, and then the port that's used by default with rig control is 4532. And uh, let's see, we can go to rig options. And then for the push to talk method, uh, we're going to use the cat control interface. So I'm gonna go ahead and do test cat. And if it works, it should turn up in green. And then we'll do test PTT. And it just fired up my, my radio, so we're good to go there. The next thing is audio. This is another area that has a lot of problems for a lot of people. Since I'm using the uh, DigiRig, we wanna make sure we go ahead and select the ALSA input USB-C media. And then for the output, it looks like it's already selected, but let me just double check. Output USB-C media, yep. And really that's all of the settings I typically uh, put here. Uh, there's actually a couple more, uh, just based on my preference. Uh, I don't enable the network services because I typically operate offline and in general, I don't have it connected to the internet. Okay, so next we want to adjust our audio levels. As you can see here down in the, let's actually make this bigger first. Down here in the left-hand corner, you can see that the uh, audio uh, receive level is too high. It's in red here. So what I'm going to do, at least on Linux, I'm gonna open up the terminal program and I'm gonna adjust the capture volume until that gets down to about 60, maybe 70 dB. And there's a little program that I like to use called ALSA Mixer. And to be able to configure the DigiRig, I'm gonna hit function F6, and it is USB PMP sound device. And then I need to do function F5. And you can see here the capture level is probably way too high. So I'm gonna press the down arrow key and then watch the area on the left. And I usually think about 19, yeah, there we go. So that's about where I wanna be. We're at 74 dB, we're green, and we'll go ahead and click exit. And let me do some adjustments here. And we're already getting some traffic come through, which is kinda of cool. But before we do that, let me go ahead and explain a few things here. So on the top left-hand corner here, we have our frequencies. And what's nice about JSA Call is that they have certain calling frequency. So if you right-click, you can go ahead and select the one that's appropriate for you. We use 40 meters mostly for our regional communication. And then you've got the center frequency or offset here, which is 100 or 1500 Hertz. Across the middle, you have your call sign. You have by default the time and date in UTC. So this is roughly uh, seven hours further than uh, my local time. And then across here, we have receive is enabled, transmit is enabled and then a bunch of different options here. So I like to right click, and the options I use typically, uh, with JSA Call you have different uh, modes that have different characteristics. So for example, the slow mode is what you would use probably in a real emergency situation if uh, conditions are bad and you wanna make sure the signal gets through. In my testing, I have found that the normal mode actually seems to be the sweet spot with who I want to communicate with. The faster you get, Obviously the faster your transmission goes through, but also the harder it is for other people to hear. So I like to do normal mode. So right click again, and I wanna make sure that I enable auto reply with confirmations. Right click again. We want to enable heartbeat networking. This is a very powerful feature of JSA call, and we want to enable auto acknowledgements. The power that JSA Call provides is it has this ability to detect other people in the network and you guys can automatically exchange reports and it gives you a sense of how many operators are around. So those are all the settings I like to do. First thing in the morning, what I like to do when I start up my station is I go over to the heartbeat acknowledge and I go ahead and click this and it'll send a heartbeat. Let me turn on my camera here. 
and it's actually transmitting the message that you see down in the bottom here. This is my transmit text window. Uh, the yellow portion is the receive window. So I basically told, hey, everybody, uh, I'm on the network. Who can hear me? Right now it's 4.45 in the morning, so my mileage is going to vary. But you can already see here in the waterfall, there are at least three or four signals coming in. And when those come in, you'll see them come in in the band activity section here on the left. And then you can also see all the data that came in. So there were three stations. So if you look at the message in yellow, there was a station Kilo Bravo 8, Uniform Victor November. He was sending the message to me. He was responding to my heartbeat. And he says my signal to noise ratio was minus 16 dB. Um, and then same thing with the other two stations. So it will log the time that that message came in. Basically, it should match the system clock when it came in. The area in parens is the uh, where they are on the waterfall. So these, this guy is at 498 hertz, so he's down here. So pretty cool stuff. So I get a good picture. Off to the right, we have the call activity. And it's actually kind of nice. You actually see here that there is a star next to those three stations that uh, responded to me. That means they can hear me. So really nice stuff. The other thing that it shows here is my received report for them if they ask for it. So Kilo Bravo 8 Uniform Victor November, I received him at 09 dB. So if he was to do a heartbeat and I could hear, I would respond with this piece here. Really straightforward. I highly recommend you guys keep on heartbeating. The other thing I like to do is uh, if I'm just working today, I will put on repeat every 15 minutes and every 15 minutes it'll jump down and send a heartbeat. And pretty much with those settings, you have joined the JSA call network and it's automatically uh, auto responding to people in terms of the networking. So if nothing else, that this is where I would start. I forgot a couple of configuration steps. So if you go back to settings and go to the networking and auto reply, there are a few things that uh, I like to change. So under auto reply, I always turn off, off ask for confirmation before sending an auto reply transmission. And that's because I typically walk away and leave my station running unattended. The other thing that I do is the idle timeout uh, to disable an auto reply after. It's set to 60 minutes of inactivity. And what I typically do here is enter in zero and then use the down arrow key until I see disabled and that'll allow the system pretty much to run automated. All right guys, so one thing I like to do every morning is ask which stations have messages for me, and we could do a directed query where we can click on the all call. This means that I'm gonna send a message out and tell, hey, if you can hear this message and you're participating in all call, which is the default, let me know if you have any messages for me, and they can respond with a, um, uh, the message ID. So we would go directed to uh, all call and we would put here uh, query messages. Now I haven't had good luck this morning uh, with this so I'm not going to tie it up but basically what you should get at, at some point is a response something that looks sort of like this line here and this is from November Zero Golf Quebec and it has a message ID. So someone has left a message for me on this other operator station. So what I'm gonna do now, instead of selecting all call, I'm gonna click this guy, November Zero Golf, uh, Quebec, go to directed to, and then I'm gonna ask him, send me the message ID, and the message ID there is 96. And you can do this as many times as you want with all the operators. Now this is gonna take 30 seconds to send. I told you that our message payload is fairly limited. Uh, in, in terms of the size and how long it takes. Since we're on the normal mode, it means each frame of data takes 15 seconds. So 30 seconds means there's two frames of, of data. So I'll speed this up, but bottom line is if that station is able to hear, uh, hear my transmission, it should actually respond back. So while that's going on, let's actually see where this operator is located. This is November Zero Golf Quebec. And uh, this is a customized piece of software that I've written called MCOM Tools. It has not been released yet, but it's an offline uh, database of all the FCC call signs in the US, and I can actually see where they're located. So it looks like this station actually is located in kind of my Southwest area. So my 
Envis deployed antenna seems to be working great. Uh, it looks like he's in uh, Franktown at, how far is he? Distance of 552 miles. So that's actually pretty cool. So let's go back to uh, JS8 call and let's see if he actually... Okay, so it looks like someone has sent him a message to store for me and it says no SIGs HR73 via N0GQ from VVK. And once this is actually fully complete, you'll get a message pop up just like this. That was perfect timing. And then you'll notice over here that there's a little inbox icon. We'll right click and show message inbox. And you can see this is actually from someone outside of the US. Now I can't look them up in the call sign, but I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And I'm gonna use this station in uh, Colorado to actually reply to this person. All right, and it looks like my station right now is, uh, is tied up doing an acknowledgement. We're gonna have to wait about five or six seconds for this to go through. So while that's going on, I'm gonna right click on the station that the other gentleman left me a message. We're gonna do directed to, and the hot ticket here is message two. We're gonna enter in that call sign uh, VK5, and I'll put thanks for the message. And then I wanna sign it with my call sign because they won't be able to uh, uh, disambiguate who it came from if I leave it on someone else's station. So I'll put KT7RUN. And I kept it short. You'll notice here that it's going to take one minute to transmit. So keep in mind that you want to keep your transmission small uh, because in this case it's going to do four 15 second transmissions just for that little bit of text. So what will happen is as soon as this is done transmitting, uh, this message will be parked on that station in uh, in Colorado and then at whatever time the other operator VX or Victor Kilo 5 Charlie Zulu is able to get it he will get it so guys I don't want to spend too much time on going over everything we went over heartbeats today and we went over uh, message storage and retrieval using other stations there's a whole lot more uh, you can do direct messaging uh, that's not something I do too much because I'm usually unattended and away from my station so hopefully this just gives you the little bit of information that you might need to get started. There's a whole lot of other really cool things that you can do with JSA Call, and I'm gonna to try to tackle them in the future. So with that said, guys, I really appreciate you sticking with me and dealing with all of my terrible lighting and issues we had this morning. Again, I'm not um, a big fan of doing the screen recordings because they are a nightmare to produce, especially the ones that are real-time radio stuff. So. I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Oh, and big thanks to you guys on buying me a coffee. Um, I'm still working on the documentation for you that describes all of this configuration specifically for our group. Really appreciate you guys. Take care. Oh, if you're still with me, while I was rambling and doing my clothes, you can see there that November Zero Golf Quebec actually acknowledged that he received my message and it's stored. So that station, uh, wherever the heck um, VK is, I don't know if that's Canada or Australia, uh, should be able to pick it up. All right, later guys.